Hi, and welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to ensure that you're using the correct audio channels in your edit, as well as how to get the perfect sync when synchronizing your separate audio and video clips. To begin with though, let's look at how audio channels are actually handled in DaVinci Resolve. I'll start in the media page and import this clip into my project. As you can see from the thumbnail, this clip has audio. In the metadata panel, I can see that this clip has two audio channels. If I play the clip in the viewer, that is the, brain the audio meters in the media page show two distinct audio channels, which I can also see by switching the viewer to display the audio track. Of course, all this tells us is that this clip has two audio channels. It doesn't tell us how they're configured. The only real way to know this is by right-clicking and choosing Clip Attributes. Looking under the Audio tab shows that this clip's two audio channels are configured as left and right channels in a single stereo track identified as Audio 1. What does this mean in practice? Well, I'll close the Clip Attributes, right-click the same clip, and choose to create a new timeline using the selected clip. I'll leave all these options alone, including the option to create the timeline's audio tracks based on the selected media. Once the new timeline is created, I'll double click it to open it in the edit page. As we can see, the timeline has been created with just one stereo audio track. Of course, this means there are actually two audio channels contained within the single clip on the track to make it simpler to edit. To see an additional level of detail, I'll right-click the clip and choose to display individual audio channels. This then displays the two audio channels in the clip separately, even though they're still working as a single clip in the timeline. This is easier to see in the Fairlight page, where the two channels are displayed individually in the same track by default, as well as being labelled left and right. But again, because the channels are configured in a single clip, I can't adjust them separately. Of course, it's highly unlikely that I'd want this audio to be configured as stereo because it's an interview clip and was likely recorded across two separate mic inputs. Back in the media page, I'll open the clip attributes again, and instead of allowing the channels to be configured as stereo, I'll change the format to mono. This just displays the first embedded audio channel, meaning the second channel is no longer being shown. But it is still there. I'll choose to add an additional mono track to this clip and change the source channel to the second embedded audio channel. Clicking OK doesn't initially appear to have done anything. The number of audio channels in the metadata panel still shows two, as does the audio track display in the viewer and the meters in the audio panel. I was a big fan of Orson Welles. I had done several projects on him. Although I can hear a difference through my speakers. But the main change can be seen when I place this clip into a timeline. I'll create another new timeline using the same clip. Again, leaving all the options set to the defaults, and open this new timeline in the edit page. This time, instead of one stereo track, the timeline has been created with two mono tracks. And because these audio channels are now in separate tracks, it means I can adjust them individually. And with link selection off, I can also trim them separately too. As an additional power tip, you can actually name your clip's audio tracks, similar to how you would name tracks in a timeline. In the metadata panel, click the Sort menu and choose Audio Tracks. This allows you to label the audio tracks for the selected clips. These names will then be visible when choosing the tracks to use in the clip attributes as well as on the clip names in the timeline on the Edit and Fairlight pages. Of course, not all audio is recorded as simply as this with two audio channels. In fact, many professional cameras can often record up to eight audio channels on a clip. For example, this clip contains a total of eight audio channels. But using the meters in the media page shows audio only seems to have been recorded on the first two channels which is confirmed by displaying the audio track in the viewer. Yep, that's right. This clip 
has six empty audio channels. Opening the clip attributes reveals that these channels are configured as separate mono tracks. This makes working with this clip in the timeline rather awkward. For a start, it means managing all these audio tracks in the timeline takes much more time. And although I can choose not to edit the unwanted audio channels using track targeting, it would be much easier to deal with just the audio channels I do need. So back in the clip attributes, I can choose to remove the channels I'm not using. For this clip, that would be all the embedded audio from channel 3 to channel 8. This leaves a much more manageable two mono tracks to have to work with, but with the option of exposing any of the other audio channels if I ever needed to. Remember, removing audio channels like this in clip attributes is not deleting them. They are still a part of the clip, just simply not being used. And the great thing is, I can make this change to a whole bunch of selected clips, all at the same time. Understanding how Resolve handles clip audio is also key to working with separately recorded audio files that you will need to sync to your camera media for editing. Here I've got a bunch of interview clips from different camera angles. Each of the clips has two channels of embedded audio recorded for reference using the onboard camera mics and currently configured in a single stereo track. This bin contains the audio files which were recorded separately. Each file has four channels, configured as mono, but with labels added to each channel by the sound recordist to make them easy to identify. I now need to sync the audio files with the appropriate camera file. You can either let Resolve automatically sync the files for you or do it yourself manually. Let's look at the automatic options first. I'll simply right click the bins containing all the files I want synced and choose Auto Sync Audio. I now have the choice of syncing using timecode or waveform analysis. Using the timecode option is always going to be quicker, provided it was set up correctly of course. But both methods also have the option to append tracks. If you just choose the timecode or waveform option, then the synced audio will actually be used in place of your original embedded audio. However, if you choose the append tracks option, then the additional audio will actually be added to your embedded audio as part of the clip attributes. I'll choose to sync these files based on timecode and append tracks. At first, it doesn't appear as though Resolve has done anything. No window has appeared telling me the audio has been synced successfully. But when I select the clips, you'll see the metadata panel tells me that each clip now has six audio channels. And in list view, the synced audio column shows which audio file has been synced with which clip. Sure enough, the audio channels are viewable in the audio track display in the viewer, my name is Chris Lane. As well as in the meters in the audio uh, panel. We are located in our store in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Of course, I've probably still got more audio channels than I need, but don't forget that I can always reconfigure those in clip attributes. So with all the clips selected, I'll open clip attributes, and the linked audio channels are clearly labeled. So now I can remove the tracks I don't want, keeping just the tracks I need for the edit. Again, knowing I can always adjust them later if I need to. Synced audio clips will be shown in the timeline with a large dot before their clip name. If you want to see the audio file name instead of the clip name, you can choose Show File Names from the View menu, ensuring that the option Overlay Synced Audio File Names is also checked. Syncing audio manually is also possible, of course. This is particularly useful if you don't have reference audio or synced timecode across the two clips. However, you must ensure that you manually select the correct video and audio clips yourself. Here, I've got a clip that has no reference audio, so the audio will need to be synced manually. To achieve this, I'll disable Live Media Preview in the viewer and select the Waveform tab in the audio panel. With the video clip in the viewer, I'll locate the clap where the sync point should be. Then do the same in the audio panel for the audio clip. Once the two playheads are in position, 
I'll just click the link unlink audio button to sync the two clips. And there's just time for one more power tip, but please subscribe and make sure you like this video if you found it useful. If you need to refine the sync, open the clip in the viewer in the media page and use the slip audio options in the trim menu to slip the audio forwards or backwards by one frame. You can also slip the audio by a subframe, which is about the 10th of one frame for additional accuracy.